the Ossipee John Doe, identified as Dwayne Dewey Polin. This is one I nearly didn't cover. Mr. Dewey Poulin went unidentified for two years, and while it wasn't a long cold case, by not covering it, it felt like I was saying that Dewey didn't matter. And he did. He was an 84-year-old man who deserved more than disappearing from an assisted living facility. He had two daughters who loved him very much. Dewey was known to wander, and he'd escaped the Tamouth Community Living Center in West Ossipee once before. But that time, he was returned home unharmed. My first thought was anger at the Living Center. However, this story isn't quite that simple. A lawsuit was filed, and it's possible the home was in fact negligent, as Dewey's daughters both alleged the administrator assured them that a more restrictive environment was unnecessary. It is also important to be clear the Tamworth Community Living Center won the lawsuit, but there are some serious concerns regarding these allegations. It's not unthinkable that one might not tell the truth in order to avoid liability. It was further complicated by the fact his daughters purchased a GPS tracker that was supposed to be on the man's clothes at all times, with the home saying Dewey did not understand why it was there and he would remove it himself, and it wasn't attached to him that day. There are questions, however, of how hard they were trying to keep it on him. It turns out that Dewey had a prescription for the GPS from a doctor, making it mandatory to leave on. There was also a script for Seroquel, which is an antipsychotic that is sometimes given to dementia patients to calm them down. In Dewey's case, his condition had deteriorated to the point where he had aggressive tendencies. His family felt these would be exacerbated in a locked unit. But not only did the home not give him his GPS that day, he wasn't being given the prescription for Seroquel. Who knows, this could have changed the outcome. Ultimately, there's no winners because Dewey did escape and nothing will change that. The police suspect he might have hitchhiked with well-meaning travelers trying to get to his childhood home in Wilton, Maine. He made it about 20 minutes away from his home and had another two hours to go to get to Wilton where he had lived once upon a time, if that was indeed where he intended to go. When people like Dewey begin to lose cognitive function, the older memories are more solid. So it's possible that was his plan to go to Wilton. Authorities had suspended the active search for him three days after he was reported missing, and whoever gave him a ride didn't come forward. Dwayne Dewey Poulin was missing for four years. He went unidentified for two. The West Memphis, Arkansas Jane Doe, 1990, identified as Zena Marie Jones. Zena was 30 when she disappeared, leaving a lost and confused five-year-old daughter behind. She would be discovered on the shore of the Mississippi River on July 28, 1990. They were able to tell in life she'd been about five foot two, and she was very underweight, about 85 pounds but who she was remained a mystery long after the man who took her life confessed. It would come out later her life was taken by a monster who took the lives of as many as 95 women from 1970 to 2005, a monster by the name of Samuel Little. He largely targeted women of color, but that wasn't always the case. He chose from the most at-risk population he could find, working girls and those with addictions or both. He felt himself clever that he wouldn't or couldn't be caught because of who he targeted. But he wasn't clever, and he was, in fact, caught. He was known for drawing the women later on that he targeted from memory. And what was shocking is these pictures were pretty accurate. He didn't do it out of the goodness of his heart, though. In fact, he refused to even help investigators if they ever mentioned that they were trying to give the family closure. It's not something he wanted or cared about. It was more about bragging and reliving it. The picture he drew of Zena was more accurate than the reconstruction done by the police. He told the police that she wanted to make money, and he wanted to take a life. And he bragged that while he was strangling her, a Memphis police car drove by, and they had no idea. He eventually placed her in his truck, traveling a distance and tossing her away as if she didn't matter. He described her clothing, and it indeed matched what she was wearing when she was found. In her pockets was a crack pipe, two packs of condoms, and 64 bullets. Her remains were sent to the crime lab, and a sample was submitted to the University of Northern Texas for human identification. 
eventually being logged into CODIS. Sadly, it would take 31 years before DNA confirmed what Bernice Talley guessed when she saw a newscast that sent chills through her. Bernice was just five when her mother left home and never returned. Over the years, she heard a lot of stories that were disturbing, but saying her aunt Vicki Waddington refused to believe them. The two of them, in part, wanted to believe that Zena was still out there somewhere and they could find her. This is a common thread in so many identifications. They held out hope for her return until 2019, when the family was watching a News Channel 3 broadcast and a sketch done by Little appeared on their TV with a note saying she was killed in Memphis. And as I said, it's a very accurate depiction of Zena. She was immediately recognized. Bernice knew this was her mother, and she contacted the Memphis police. Little would die in 2020, but police were able to question him one last time. He said he met her on Crump Boulevard between 1985 to 1990, providing again accurate details of what she wore. Her sister would later state that they actually lived around Crump and Mason Boulevard at the time, and they had lived there for many years. He drove her across the bridge to Arkansas to dump her. Detectives working with the Crittenden County Sheriff's Office were able to tie Little to an unidentified body pulled from the river in 1990. WREG covered the scene back then and reported she was found by a fisherman. She had been on the shore for a couple of weeks, and she was wearing the clothing Little described. They took a mouth swab from Zena's daughter, Bernice, but it would take more than a year before they were able to tell her it was a 98% match. She had finally found her mother. That's one of the biggest takeaways from these cases, too. No matter what mistakes these men or women make in life, no one deserves to be without a name, and they all have parents, siblings, children that love them. Everybody deserves a chance to go home again. Whatever mistakes they made, they paid for far more than they deserved. The despicable human known as Samuel Little helped use his drawings to close more than 50 cases, though he did it for himself, not the family. He enjoyed the power it gave him, and he would refer to the drawings as his babies. There are likely more unsolved cases attributed to him. Well over 20 drawings of women haven't been matched yet. Zena Marie Jones was 30 when Little took her life. She went unidentified for 31 years. Had she lived, she'd be 61 today. Thank you everybody for watching and listening. If you could help to get the channel noticed by the YouTube algorithm by liking and leaving a comment, even if you can just leave a thumbs up or some emoji, it counts as engagement. It would be so appreciated. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't yet. Thanks everyone. Take care of yourselves and each other.